Okay, hey everybody, this is uh, Mark Johnston. I'm going to show you how to make a math diagnostic um, using the Halton Cloud Google Forms. Um, you're going to create a spreadsheet with the results from that form and then how you could use Fluberu to automatically mark um, your diagnostic as long as it's multiple choice, which I know is not great, but great for diagnostics. So, you're going to log into the cloud just like you normally do and we're going to create our form first. Now, forms are kind of weird. Um, they don't really share like normal documents but they're also very powerful once you get into them. So I'm just going to create a form and now I can write up my form here. You can choose the pretty little picture or just not have a, a background there. One thing you definitely want to do is click um, these top two clicks here, require Halt District School Board login to view this form. That means that only your kids are going to be taking your form. And also the second one, which is going to collect um, their username in my spreadsheet so that I know who's who. Um, I could turn that off and I could make one of my questions say, what is your name? Um, but I find this is easy and once you get working with this, you'll start to notice the kids' names in their ID anyways. Um, so now you just basically create your form here. So I can just give it a title. So uh, let's call this uh, grade four um, and I'm going to call this um, number sense diagnostic or whatever I'm working on. I like to always name my documents. I put in all kinds of stuff here so that I can always search for it later. Um, I'm not big on being organized with the folders, but if you are, good for you. Um, so there's my title, and now I can just start putting in my questions. So, you know, I can look at the curriculum and get some ideas on things I want to look at. Um, usually kind of the big ideas are what you're after so that I can then determine what I want to teach. But let's just say I want to look at um, maybe this rounding question. So round four digit whole numbers, the nearest 10, blah, blah, blah. So I can make some multiple choice questions easily on that, uh, on that idea. So, my question title could be, round this number to the nearest, um, let's say, 100. And the help text just shows up under the text, so usually it's going to be um, actually like how to complete the form kind of help, but you could put uh, a clue or something in there as well if you wanted. Now I'm going to use multiple choice. Now there are other options, um, but multiple choice is good because Fluber is going to automatically mark it. So, I put my choices in here. Oh, I should put the number in here, I guess, too. And what was the number they gave? I might as well use their sample. I'll do this 9,307. 9,307. And I can put my choices in here. So rounding it to the nearest hundred. So I could say um, 9,000 is one of my choices. I could say, let's go 9,300. I could say, um, let's go 9,400. And let's go with uh, 7 million. And I always like to put I don't know, because this is a diagnostic. And if the kids really just don't know, I'd rather them not guess. And I'd rather them say, I don't know. That's OK. Um, we're going to work on that. Cool little feature here. If you click on Advanced Settings, you can shuffle the order so that the kids won't have the same options in the same order. They'll be uh, randomized. So. I just keep making questions. So I'm not going to spend any more time making them, but you get the idea. You could include um, a paragraph text question if there's something you want to explore. It's not going to be able to be automatically marked, but it's something you can include. Um, I like to break it up a little bit and put in some other types of things that I'm just going to read on my own, but I'm not going to add anything more. So I'd add all my questions. Um, and there we go. A couple choices down here. You could have them submit twice. I don't like to. I'd rather they just do it and then it'd be over. And I do like to turn this on, which means right after they finish, they can go back and they can edit their form so they could re-answer a question. It only is a kind of a one-time deal. Um, but there we go. So now you've got to send this form, and it doesn't share. So it actually wants email addresses, etc. So what I actually usually do is if you have a website, you just click on all that, and you can copy it. And you can paste that right into your website. If you don't have a website, what you could do instead is create a document and just put the link in there and then call it you know please fill out this form or whatever and then you can share that the uh, normal way so the way you're used to if you're kind of getting into the cloud so now if I want to share this with a kid whose name is Rebecca there's kind of some of the Rebecca's you get the idea so that's kind of a good trick to know now once your kids answer the form What's going to happen is you're actually going to end up getting a spreadsheet. Um, and it looks like this. So when the kids actually answer the form, it's going to look like 
this. So this is what they'll see, and they'll click their answers, and they'll submit when they're done. What I'm going to get is I'm actually going to get a spreadsheet. Now I'm going to go into my documents, because I actually did this with some grade fours. Um, and this was my quiz, my diagnostic looked like this. So I had all kinds of um, parts and holes, fractions and decimals sort of question for grade four. And I actually got all their responses like this. So all the kids who took this are here. Um, I've got their answers. Um, I can read them. I have their name here, their username, their Halton ID. I've got a timestamp, what time did they completed it. I've got all kinds of great information here for my diagnostic. The first thing I can do is if you click on form, you can click on show summary of responses and you get some really useful information already. Um, what would you call this fraction? Most kids know that that is one half. In fact, it was 23 kids um, out of my 26 responses. 88% of kids know that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time teaching that. But as I go through, uh, half my kids already don't know what one takeaway one-tenth is. So something I need to spend more time on. So I've got tons of great information already. The Fluberu is an add-on. Now if you don't see add-ons and you're doing this, you, it might be called scripts, but it's the same idea. I'm going to get this add-on or script. I'm going to search for it. It's called Fluberu, spelled like that. I did not name it. And I'm going to add it. And what this is going to do, this is blocking my pop-up is I'm going to add, is it coming back here? Let's try that again. It's going to add this Fluberu, there we go, um, add-on to my spreadsheet. So it asks me for all this information, firstborn, new mortgage, good. I'm going to accept that. And I now have Fluberu as an option, eventually, um, in this add-ons box. There it is. So now I have Fluberu. And what I can do is I can grade my assignment. So Fluberu is only going to ask me a couple questions. It's going to ask me, yeah, it's going to ask me which one's right. So you need to complete this yourself, or just pick like a, a kid who you know get everything right. And you need to pick which questions you want Fluberu to grade. It only does multiple choice. So um, and you can give it different points. I think one to five. So um, all my questions good. One point, one point. It knows that username identifies the students, which is good. And there's a couple I wanted to skip grading. I asked the kids, how do you feel about fractions and decimals? Um, put on a scale of 1 to 5. I wanted to skip that because otherwise it's going to pick, if I said 5 in my answer, it's only going to look for 5s and it's going to call that right when in fact, you know, um, I'm not interested in that data. Do you like this sort of multiple choice diagnostic? I'm going to skip grading that because it's again a scale of 1 to 5. But all the rest of these are good. So I say continue. And now it'll ask me one more question. It says, which one of these is the answer key? So which one's right? So I've got all my kids here. I don't trust them, but there's me, Johnston MA. So I took it and I got all the answers right. So I pick myself, click continue, and there's a problem. Hooray. OK, so once it works, you'll have a new tab at the bottom. So I've got student submissions. This is just what Google generated automatically. I click on grades, and I get all kinds of cool data. So I had, there were seven possible points because I had um, seven questions that were given each one point. The average score was 3.8. I had 25 answers that were counted. It did not count the 26 because it was me. That was the answer key. And I have four questions I need to worry about, basically Fluberu is saying. Um, it's giving each kid a score, a percentage, how many points they got, um, and they're red if they're kind of, um, a, should be a concern. Now as a diagnostic, I'm not concerned. Um, how many times they submitted, you can have an email, I don't do that for grade fours. And then I've got the ones or zeros, so just one for correct and uh, zero for incorrect. Um, these were skipped, not graded. And at the very bottom, I can see these are orange, at the very bottom I can see why. 80% kids have got um, this correct, only 28, 24. So these are the questions I really need to worry about. These ones that are 88 are not questions I'm going to spend a lot of time teaching, but these ones are, are certainly the type of ideas I'm going to go after. So that's about it. I know it was quick, but um, you can explore some more or feel free to email me um, if you have any questions. But I find it very useful to do at the start of a unit, get a ton of data, um, lots of information to work through. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.